Since ChatGPT was released, we marketers have been fascinated with its potential to be able to help us with a wide range of marketing tasks, including one of the most time consuming, content writing. Trouble is, when most marketers actually try using ChatGPT for content writing, they realize that the quality of the output is not really that useful. It tends to be very generic and sort of feel like AI content, which doesn't make it particularly useful for most marketing tasks. Well, at Exposure Ninja and Powered by AI, we've been experimenting with the use of ChatGPT for content writing. And in this video, we're gonna share some of our findings about how to get ChatGPT to produce significantly better content for you. Of course, getting the most out of ChatGPT or any AI tool is all down to the prompts that you're using. If you give it basic or garbage prompts, you're gonna get basic garbage output. But the trouble is all you see is this blank box. How do you know what to put in it? It's like having an incredibly intelligent team member or employee, but you have no idea what they need from you in order to be effective. Well, you've probably seen these prompt guides and prompt cheat sheets, and they can help you get some of the way there. Now, this doesn't get you all of the way there, but better prompts do produce better content. Some of the areas that you might wanna focus on include establishing context, we're gonna look at some examples in a minute, but if you give ChatGPT a very small amount of information, it's obviously going to produce something that feels very generic because it just doesn't have enough background info to make something that feels tailored. One of the most time-saving techniques in prompting is specifying the output format. For example, do you want ChatGPT to produce you a list or do you want it to produce you a fully formatted article with headings and subheadings? So let's take a look at some examples. In this first example, you'll see that we've used a very straightforward, basic and generic prompt, create a blog about future trends in the wearable tech market. There's not enough context here for this to be useful and it's very difficult for ChatGPT to produce anything other than entire generic output, which is exactly what it's done. Now it's used a very standard chat GPT format. We've got a list of 10 items followed by a conclusion. There's no original thought. There's nothing unique or insightful about this content at all. And to be honest, it's not really worth the pixels that it's posted on. And in the second example, you can see the prompter has given it more detail. For example, we've set the context explaining the situation and giving the article a goal. We've even given chat GPT a persona to adopt. We've been specific about the format that we want. This will save you a whole bunch of time in formatting the output yourself. We've specified a target audience to make sure our content is pitched at the right level, but we've also given it some target keywords to include in the content as well. Now, what has been produced is significantly better. First up, because we've specified the format, it's much easier to read and to scan to find the information that's most useful. Now, it's also coming up with more interesting insight. Now, I wouldn't say any of this is original. We wouldn't expect it to to be original with just a single prompt and no feedback, but we're getting the sort of thing that might be interesting to a slightly more advanced audience. It's also matching the tone that we set and straight out of the box includes the target keywords that we specified, meaning straight away, even without any additional editing, this is going to be more useful for SEO. Now, in all honesty, this is still better, but it's nowhere near perfect. This is still going to need human fact checking. It's probably gonna need editing. And to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't publish this on my website unless it had some sort of unique or original insight, which this just doesn't have. But clearly a more detailed prompt has got us closer. It saved a huge amount of time compared to going back to this original article and trying to insert all of the tone of voice and the context manually yourself. But how do you take this content to the next level? Well, the area that most ChatGPT prompters and ChatGPT hackers on Twitter miss is the power of iterating and collaborating with AI tools like ChatGPT. Yes, you can get a reasonable article first time, but if you truly understand the limitations and how ChatGPT works, you can collaborate with it, go back and forward to produce something which is much more insightful and potentially useful from a marketing perspective. Let me show you an example. 
Now in this article, which is actually the same topic, the future of wearable trends, what we've done is we've asked it to come up with a way to make the story more interesting, perhaps using a hook. And it's then gone and done it. In this case, it's rewritten the introduction to use a personal story. Of course, the personal story is made up. You would need to then go and edit this and insert your own. But the point is, it can help you improve the article if you are specific about the ways you want it to improve the article. Now in this next prompt, we've asked it to adapt the article to target a very specific audience of investors. And it's done a pretty Pretty good job. And we find that this is one of ChatGPT's real strengths. If you get it to produce some decent content and then you ask it to overlay a different concept or to rewrite this for a different audience, then you start to get more original insight. You can also ask it to expand on any points in your content that you think warrant more detail. And one of our favorite ways to do this is to ask it to use specific examples. This is the sort of thing that would take a long time to manually research. So having ChatGPT do this work for you is a great time saver. So here it's gone through and found a whole bunch of different examples which back up the points that it's made. Now again, I've asked it to expand on this even further. Now it's given the examples. Can it expand on those examples to talk about the challenges and how they've been overcome? This is the sort of thing that investors might find really interesting. But still, we didn't quite feel like this article had enough new original insight. So what we asked ChatGPT to do was to find a parallel industry that we could draw lessons from and get it to make some predictions based on. Again, this sort of pattern matching is something that ChatGPT is really good at, so it did a pretty good job of this. Now that you've asked ChatGPT to produce some content, you've asked it to iterate that content, you've asked it for other similar situations, and then you ask it to combine these into one article, that's when you start to get unique insight. We end up with the basics of an article that actually could be pretty interesting. Now, of course, one of the major challenges with ChatGPT and all generative AI is its tendency to hallucinate, i.e. make stuff up. Fact checking the writing that these tools produce is really important and we have a dedicated editorial team at Exposure Ninja that does this work anytime we're using any AI in any part of the content workflow. But if you don't have the luxury of an editorial or fact checking team at hand, one trick that you can use is to feed your content into another service like Google Bard for example. Google Bard allows you to double check responses and it'll give you these green and orange indicators to show you where it's found website content that corroborates what you're saying and where it hasn't found website content to corroborate what you're saying. Now whilst this isn't the same as fact checking, this statement has not been fact checked, what it does allow you to do is to quickly identify a source which may be able to help you with the fact check. So it greatly speeds things up. But as you've seen, getting the most out of ChatGPT isn't as simple as just following a few prompts on a prompt cheat sheet. That will only get you so far. That will only get you to version one of the content. And really, the good stuff starts coming out much further down after you've been working with ChatGPT and going backwards and forwards. On top of this, we find that the specific techniques and prompts that get the best out of ChatGPT for content writing can vary by business and industry and also the experience level of the audience that you're writing for. That's why we at Powered by AI have a ChatGPT training service where we can help you and your team get to grips with ChatGPT, not just for content writing, but for a range of digital marketing tasks. We'll help you do things like understanding the capabilities and limitations of these tools. That's really important so that you know when you're asking it to do something, whether it's just gonna give you a bullshit answer or whether it's gonna give you an answer which is right in its zone of expertise. We'll also show you how to collaborate with ChatGPT to get much better output than if you just treat it like a slave or a servant and expect it to do your work for you. And of course, we'll show you how to avoid some of the biases and pitfalls that can come from generative AI content, as well as addressing some of the privacy and security concerns. If you're interested in finding out more about this training, request a free consultation from the team. Go to the link in the description or go to pbai.co today. Hope you enjoyed this video and let us know in the comments what are your key tips to getting the best quality content out of ChatGPT and other generative AI tools. See you soon.